right. Well, there we go. So that was kind of a quick uh, 30 second intro here. And uh, we have the wonderful Michelle Schaefer with us as well today. And so this is going to be unlike some of the other live streams where we, uh, because we have some really amazing things to share with you. So yes. um, the, we're really going to be kind of pulling back the curtain, so to speak, and sharing certain things with you guys that I haven't shared, right? And where we're headed, what uh, is going on in the marketplace that you need to be aware of, and what we're doing at Strategic Profits to make sure that we're going to be as well prepared as possible to exploit what is certainly going to happen in the future. And I want to make sure that you guys do as well. And so Michelle is joining us today, but uh, we already have quite a few of you on and more are joining every second. So uh, please, as always, uh, let us know where you're at and say hello to us. Uh, that is for both Michelle and mine benefit, but it's not only for our benefit, it also tells the algorithm gods out there that uh, we are worthy of watching. And so it will show it to more people. So emote, comment. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Give it a thumbs up and comment. If you're watching on Facebook, please comment, emote. And uh, if you're on LinkedIn, uh, please comment and link up with us. And across all platforms, uh, please share it. And if you share it, hit pound share so that Michelle and I can personally Thank you. Right now, we are primarily have people on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and we had one person on Periscope and then they kind of bailed. And um, we never know how many people are watching on LinkedIn because it doesn't report back. So how are you doing tonight, Michelle? I am great. I am excited. Um, this is going to be an amazing live stream. You guys are about to get some behind the scenes secrets. So I am great. I'm excited. We got people from everywhere here. Yeah. Yep. We got lots of people joining us. So let's say hello to some people and then we can kind of start the... Uh, Start all the right. get them all rolling, so speak. And I got to move a little bit. So let me just adjust my screen here. Cool. And uh, so, hello, Trader Rob. Yes, Infinity Funnel is a new concept that we'll be going over in quite a bit of detail tonight. Yes. So, greetings from Coronado Island. Hello, Dr. Vogelman. Good to see you, my friend. And Martin, good to see you. Uh, and Christopher shared three times, and that's why Dr. Vogelman is our hero. Thank yes, you thank so you. much, Dr. Vogelman. Hey, Adam in New York, and Martin in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're both jealous of that. Yes. And James is in San Diego checking in. Good to see you, James. And Tom from the UK, hello. And uh, usually I have so much more screen to move around in. I have less today. Uh, a little Tom box the UK. today. Yes, hello, Tom, <laughs> in my small box. And Galen from Atlanta, good to see you, Galen. And Jason tuning in from Tampa. Tampa. And the algorithm gods, yes, yes. they control our fates. Uh, hey, hey, everyone, there's Michelle. <laughs> um, hey. And Tom from Hungary. Hey, Tom, good to see you. And... Uh, Mustafa from Morocco and Jorge uh, from Monte Carlo. That is cool. And Gary from Stafford VFA. What do you think that is? Mm. Maybe Stafford, Virginia. And the F just kind of snuck in there. Um, Lisa from Miami Beach. Hello, Lisa. And Al Henderson shared. Thank you, Al. Awesome. Uh, Joanne Thompson. Uh, is saying hi to both of us from the UK and Kathleen Panning. Hello, Kathleen from South Carolina. And Hugo is in the house from Miami. Um, Hugo, I wanted to introduce you to someone. I'm not sure if I did. Yeah, I told them to reach out to you. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Vogelman, uh, simultaneously watching on Periscope. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yep. There's actually three people right now watching on Periscope, uh, shockingly enough. Uh, Tom Spudik. Hello, Tom. Uh, in Minnesota. How are you doing? And John from London and Andrea. Hey, Andrea, good to see you in Israel. So very cool. And David Gregory is in the UK. Always good to see you, David. And Priya, also in Israel. Good to see you, Priya. And Davy Paul, info to infinity. Let's do this. <laughs> and Felicia Bagesh is 
no longer deathly ill and out of her bed and is now uh, watching us as well. So uh, awesome. glad you're feeling better, Felicia. And Uchendi is in Nashville. Uh, and Gary Carter is in Virginia. And Richard Manson is in Santa Barbara. So very cool. So we got quite a few people. From everywhere. Man, we just have the map lighting up. Yeah, we're like, um, you know, I we what what was the uh, I forget the old platform. Woopra was the old analytics oh. platform that we used to ha use. And what was cool about Woopra is they would give you like it was like a dark screen and it had like the globe on the screen and it would like light up like everywhere where visitors were coming from. So you felt like you were in uh, war games or something like that <laughs> uh, using DARPA. Um, all right. So where should we start? Huh? Where shall we start? Oh, we've got a lot to cover today. So I, I think where we should start is what's the uh, what's the point? <laughs> what are we doing here today? Why have I kind of hijacked the, uh, yeah. the live stream for this Thursday? Because, you know, this, this is normally your show and I've kind of uh, jumped on here and I get to pick your brain and uh, ask you all the questions that the audience wants to know today. So um, let's start with just this idea of the future and what's coming, because I know I'm not the only one, and I would love if you guys in chat let me know if you ever feel this way, that sometimes feels like everything is moving so fast. It's hard to stay caught up with where things are at. It's hard to stay ahead of the curve, and it's hard to know of all these things that are flying at us, which of these things are actually the next thing? Where should we focus with all of the options and opportunities out there? And one thing that, Rich, I know about you is you have not just consistently been ahead of the curve, seeing those things, but creating those things before anybody else. Um, you know, when when we first met, one of the stories that I had heard about you was the first live stream webcast that you did. You literally pulled a satellite truck into your driveway to stream that from your home office. And that was way before anybody else was doing streams like this online. Now, you know, we go live on Facebook all the time, but you were way ahead of the curve on that one. You invented the first automated webinar. I'm sure a lot of our viewers know that story. Yep. First freemium with the Internet Business Manifesto. Very first online business coach. I mean, you can't really get any more ahead of the curve than you are. And I think that's what I want people to know as we kick things off here is the only person whose brain this idea could have come from is yours, Rich. Uh, well, you're the only one who, who has that kind of insight into the future. And as Rich kind of teased there at the beginning, we do have something very big to share with you guys today that we have been working like crazy on behind the scenes. Um, Rich sat down with us a few months ago and kind of went over the checklist of problems and challenges and things that he wanted to figure out how we brought you solutions for and how we changed things. And so that's what we're going to be diving into and sharing with you uh, as we go today. So real quick, before yes. Rich shares the very cool mind map that he's going to share with you guys, by the way, get ready to take screenshots. I'm just going to warn you now, you're going to want to grab some screenshots of this and, uh, and some notes. But I got a couple of questions because I want to see where you guys are at. So in chat, let me know with an emoji, a GIF, whatever works for you, if any of these have ever been things that you've been frustrated by, right? So funnels not converting or funnels that look like everybody else's out there. Anybody been frustrated by that one? Give you guys a minute to respond in the no. chat. Let us know. Membership sites where the retention rates suck. You know you have fantastic content, but you can't seem to get people to stay subscribed or to sign up for that. I know that's a problem a lot of people are frustrated by. Uh, getting noticed by big names. If you guys are watching Steal Our Winners, you know Rich has had pretty much the who's who of the space on Steal Our Winners, and he's connected to all of them. The rest of us, that can be frustrating sometimes, right? If you don't feel like you have that network to be able to get in touch with those people, get their attention, there's actually some easy ways to do it that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, content, yep, I see hands going up. Content treadmill. Does anybody else feel like they're in an endless cycle of creating content, and you put your heart into it, and it seems like nobody notices? or not enough people notice. <laughs> Does all of the above work? Absolutely. Uh, unengaged customers. How many of you are frustrated by tire kickers? People sign up for your freebies, but then they never actually convert. 
or they invest and then they don't actually take action with your courses and they've okay. got the info and they don't do anything with it. I know this is this is one, Rich, we've been talking about a lot. How do you help set people up to take action, right? Uh, let's see. Going over this list of things here that, that we know you guys were, were sharing with us. Um, anybody else ever seen marketing so boring that you're falling asleep reading your own sales letter? I literally had somebody tell me they fell asleep watching their own BSL. That's not a good problem to have. <laughs> I guess um, that's better than read, falling asleep while reading your VSL. Like, that would be even worse, I guess. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to find those angles that really yeah. do grab people's attention. Um, and a lot of that comes down to what we're going to share today, being ahead of the curve and the model itself being what grabs people. Uh, how about upsells? Do you guys ever struggle with getting your upsells to convert, figuring out which ones go where and how to really get them working? And the last one, being behind the curve. I know I missed YouTube. I also missed LinkedIn. Like I've been behind the curve on some of those things. A clubhouse, I actually did almost jump into, but didn't, <laughs> right? So how many of you have, have struggled with that feeling of there's so much changing, so many things coming that you never know which one to jump into or get above uh, in front of the curve with? Yeah. So I call this the, uh, the internet or frustration score. However many mm -hmm. questions you're answering yes to, and this is like golf, you want the lowest score possible <laughs> with all of this. So well, what we're going to dive into is the solution to all of those things and how to help you not be frustrated by those things in your business anymore. Yeah. Some great feedback here in chat. Let's, let's get the, I see you putting these up here. Yeah. Let's see. This one's congratulating you. I oh. really <laughs> love your contribution to steal our winners. Appreciate and we have a lot that. of agreements um, a lot of yeah. people agreeing, uh, that I panned through, um, let's yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> the 24 hour live stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, behind the curve. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. yeah. So what you want me to talk about today is challenges. What do you, what is it that you want yes. me to talk about? So first? we're going to go into sharing with you guys, the solution to all of those things. And where we want to start really is with what inspired rich to start Sailor Winners because what we're about to reveal and you're not going to want to go anywhere. So whatever else you had planned, cancel it. You're going to stick here with us for the next uh, hour or so. It will absolutely be worth your time. We're going to show you guys something first that nobody outside of our team has seen and some sneak peeks of things that you don't want to hear about this later. You want to see it now. So Rich, let's, let's start with that. What actually inspired you to get started with Sailor Winners and the concept of it? All righty. So let's Let's see if I can, whoops, control Z there. Uh, let's actually go like this, go, let's fold this. Do, do, do. Well, I guess we do want that. So we will get rid of this for now, sorry. And this, get rid of, and this, we can get rid of, and that, we can get rid He's of. He's hiding all the good stuff. See, that means you gotta <laughs> stick around so you can see those pieces in a minute. And we'll make this a little <laughs> bit bigger and if I can make it even a little bit bigger, can I? No, can't do it that way. So I got to do it this way. All right. So I think you can do it 150%. All right. So um, a couple different things. Like, and, you know, part of this, you could really even say if you followed my stuff over the years, um, I would say that really all the free reports that I've written, um, you know, back in 2006, seven, eight, Etc. cetera, um, all kind of point to where we are today that, uh, you know, I talked about in the attention age doctrine one and two, you know, attention age doctrine one was all about how attention was going to become the scarcest commodity. And then the attention age doctrine two was all about like me figuring out like where attention was going and where attention was going was to social media and what were the implications of that, right? Mm -hmm. That there'd be a explosion of choices that there would need there would be the need for authorities in every market, which is why the next report I wrote was with Jay Abraham, about, like about being a maven in a market. Um, I talked about how prospects were no longer just targets. They were actually now going to be your best channel and, um, and a bunch of other implications of uh, what happens when the web, which was a one-way communication kind of channel, becomes a two-way communication channel. 
and why attention was going to become the scarcest commodity online and what the implications of that were as far as marketing providing value if you wanted marketing to be received well and uh, if you wanted to be successful. And, you know, I after the Attention Age Doctrines, I wrote the Maven Report, which was, was all about being an authority in your market because there was a need for authorities. And then in the last report that I wrote, the uncertainty syndrome or the entrepreneurial emergency, I talked about entrepreneurs being uncertain based on all the choices that they have and how overwhelming it was and yet how important it was that they made the right decisions early on and how overwhelming that can be when you have so many options to choose from. What I think that like most people don't recognize and one of my um, kind of I guess um, one of my, I would say, criticisms of our space and just criticisms not only of our space, but even just the way the world is thinking is that if you think about it, there's been an explosion of platforms out there for people to make courses, which is all well and good, right? Uh, Thinkific, uh, Teachable, Kajabi, right? And the list goes on and on and on. And the... You know, so what coincides with that is what? An explosion of courses. Yet courses are good for what they are, but I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about courses. Courses are good as an overview, introduction to a concept, to something that requires like to take someone who has very little knowledge to a more advanced level of knowledge. But once someone has taken a course, right? Like where, like then the... To further that knowledge, wouldn't the best option would not be to take another course. And so there are like, uh, so I just don't feel like most people in our marketplace fully appreciate that attention is scarce. And that even though I wrote these reports like back in 2007, right, that attention was going to become the scarcest commodity online, which it certainly has already, um, people are operating in a way that for the most part, they're not recognizing that. And, you know, what I would say to each and every one of you is, because uh, I know it's true for me, I've got a ridiculous number of courses that I would like to go through myself, right? And yet I don't have the time for that. However, like, Absolutely. Um, you know, I was talking about offers on Tuesday and I thought I was going to be talking about offers today. We'll pick up that next Tuesday. But like I did watch um, either right before that or no, I, wrote, I think I watched it right after. I watched a, a, um, a smaller product by Traffic and Funnels on offers that was one hour long because one hour was what I had time for. And, you know, there are a lot of courses I would have liked to look at, but I did mm -hmm. not have time for any of those. And so uh, what I, you know, when I'm thinking, and so this is what Michelle was talking about, I didn't really make this for public consumption. It was more for me. Um, the... Uh, um, <laughs> You know, I, I was just thinking of some ways to kind of express that uh, that, you know, attention scarcity is a real phenomenon. Right. Yeah. Like so if you look at Medium or a bunch of different like uh, sites where multiple authors, you know, mostly content driven, um, most articles now show the time to read. Right. They mm -hmm. didn't used to do that. Like, and why do they show the time to read? Because they're letting you know up front the amount of attention that you're going to have to dedicate to this to get the outcome. Right. Like. Yeah. You know, part yeah. like this is now the way business is done. Right. And if you look at like if you're a Steal Our Winners member, then you know what Walter Birch shared with us. But even if you don't know that. Right. Uh, if you subscribe to podcasts, if you watch any video podcast, then you've probably seen uh, where they take the sexiest stuff and they bring it to the front so that yeah. they are telling you what you're going to be exposed to later on. And why do they do that? Because attention is scarce. People put a premium on their attention. So you better wow me up front and not just make me a promise, but actually show me that these things are going to be in there. And so that's why those previews are up front. So, you know, I've been watching high speed video for two decades. And uh, <laughs> you know, I've shown on other live streams, like even the cassette recorder that I had that was variable pitch and variable speed so that I could actually listen in high speed way before like digital ever <laughs> existed. Just but, another example of being ahead of the curve. Yeah, but the, but like, I don't know how many people are familiar with this. Um, I would imagine most people are, but like even Netflix, right? You can watch at 200% speed, right? Like, you know, I don't watch it at 200% speed. I'd, you know, 
if I need to go that fast, I'm not going to just watch the show. But, um, but I do watch it in a higher speed, right, to just keep my attention. And, uh, and so the commitment when someone has attention scarcity, right, is that it takes a lot, it takes a bigger commitment for someone to open a long email or to engage in a long course or, you know, anything uh, of that elk, right? So I just wanted to point out that attention scarcity is a real thing. It has only grown over time. It will continue to grow. We'll have more and more um, distractions competing for our attention. And if your business is not clued into that, if your marketing doesn't adjust to that, if your products don't align with that, then long term, uh, you know, you're not going to be in the best of situations. And if you're in the information business, then you seriously have to consider, like, how do you package your information in a way that is more conducive with where the world is going? And we'll talk more about that. Uh, any questions, any comments, Michelle? Keep you're going. Getting, you're getting all sorts of comments in in chat here. Yeah, people are, uh, of course, is gathering digital dust on their hard drive. They're buried in them. Um, and uh, I think everybody understands that is that is one of the things that we are dealing with is attention is scarce now. So how do you grab people's attention and how yep. do you create something that they want to consume? And we have some comments yeah. here for sure. Always behind the curve. I've got a bogeys on all of them. Those are yours <laughs> questions. Uh, try to say that with steal our winners. I will say a lot of the times it may not be your content, but the goldfish mines are not able to grasp. So still need to adjust them. Still our fault. <laughs> oh, well, uh, of course, they're a good yeah. starting point. The 3,500 foot view is okay, but it's not a deep dive into practical application. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to get lost. <laughs> I know that person. Uh, so many courses are gathering digital dust on my hard drive. Same with mine. Uh, hi from Ghana and sexy stuff out front, just like in the red light district. <laughs> uh, one and a half Netflix on my phone, faster on PC. Yeah. yeah, wow. I only have so many attention units available. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte says, hi, Michelle. Hey, and Jane says, and yet I listen to you for two hours each week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> these issues are all things I've been thinking about also. Yeah. And turn course into entertainment. The average pop song since the 50s has gotten twice as long. Good points. Point. Yes. Yeah. And I think with information products, audio promising, audio promising as a medium. Interesting. Um, all right. So let's keep going. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is, is that like, you know, I've talked about this in, in depth when I was teaching a course on demand creation that, you know, that you can really break up marketing into kind of two overall ways of kind of thinking about acquisition. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, prior to, um, prior to the invention of Facebook and the invention of SEO and, you know, pay-per-click, um, marketing was much more just about like setting up the beliefs and, and the mindsets that, so that when someone made a purchase, they would be choosing that company. And only with the advent of pay-per-click and Facebook did the idea of getting in front of someone who is showing already the proclivities of buying um, an ad for your product, right? And so that is a relatively like new invention, right? And we can call that really more demand chasing than demand creating. Like when you're trying to put your product in front of someone who's already showing indicators that they're in the market right. or they are showing a propensity to buy or whatever, right? They're doing a certain search. You're really trying to get in front of those. And so you're chasing the demand that's out there. And th there are plenty of huge companies that chase demand. It's not like that's, there's anything wrong with that. But what I would say is, is that um, chasing demand is something that is much easier to knock off because you're not channeling desire. You're just trying to get in front of people who are showing the proclivities of buying. And as media buying becomes more algorithm driven, uh, then the only difference is going to be more on your website or your creative and your ads. But in this day and age, like we are in a copycat world, right? The, you know, we have funnel hackers that you basically have to take 
anything that you turn on live and you have to assume that the first people that buy that could not have gone through the whole thing to even have yeah. made it an intelligent decision, just bought every single thing, were people that were planning on returning it all so that they can uh, replicate your funnel. And, you know, here's the thing, right? Like if someone can knock everything that you do off, then the problem with that is, is that there are entrepreneurs out there who are in other countries that where their currency is worth a fraction of what our currencies are worth, and they're willing to work for a lot less, right? So long-term, the like chasing demand, especially in a world where, you know, people copy each other very quickly that, you know, there's even a, you know, a term called funnel hackers, which is all about that, right? Um, the idea of really being able to stay out ahead of people, uh, at least in the ways that you used to be able to, are completely yeah. gone. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. You've got some some thank yous in the chat for that. I think that's that's yeah. something a lot of people are frustrated by right now. Yeah. The next thing is that like, you know, most entrepreneurs are outsiders, they're not insiders, right? And so the idea here is is that um because of who I know, because of where I go, uh, I am privy to information that majority of entrepreneurs are not privy to right and that information is highly valuable it mm -hmm. made agora an extra billion dollars when i took a conversation from one place to another place and you know every time when like you know in the world uh pre-covid um you know there would always be a green room you know wherever there was an event right and in the green room is generally the the speakers and the staff of the event and mm -hmm. that's where it's like safe to hang and not get inundated with questions and things like that and in the green room oftentimes that's where different strategies would be shared or if someone really good was speaking we might be in the back of the room and sharing different strategies but the thing is is that uh in this day and age where the strategies lose their potency faster than before and uh there's no access to getting them early on those two combined to really create a disadvantage for um most entrepreneurs because if there's a strategy that makes 50 percent of your webinar registration show up and you're not using that and you're only getting 20 percent well then guess what like you're settling for, you know, 40% of what you could be making just by knowing a different process. And like I said, the odds of you knowing that, what it is and how to do it, um, not very high. And you wouldn't find that necessarily in another course, even though there are an explosion of courses out there. So does that make sense? You with me? Oops, I think you muted. I am here. Yes. Yeah. I'm over here talking. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And you're getting yeah. you're getting a lot of uh, appreciation in the comments for cool. that, as All well right. as uh, somebody on YouTube is asking when we're going to go over the infinity funnel process. Stick with us for just a couple of minutes and we're going to get to yeah, that. The infinity funnel answers these things, right? Yes. Um, yep. So the next thing is, is that the funnel metaphor isn't the most accurate way any longer to represent the customer journey. And when you think about the, you know, prospects don't really follow linear customer journeys anymore. Like that made sense when uh, the business was and the marketer was in complete control of the conversation. Right. And that did exist. That existed online uh, up until like Web 2.0 and the beginning of social media. Yeah. But now that customers have a voice, uh, they also have control. And because they have control, uh, they are going on their timeline, not yours. They are going <laughs> to multiple points and doing their own research and talking in different groups. And that you can't control. So the linear process of a funnel, um, still valuable. I'm not saying it's not valuable, um, but it's not uh, optimal uh, if there are other ways of being more in alignment with the way that people buy today. And if you can do that, you're, you reap the rewards of that. 
So those are just some of the things that people have that are obstacles that I see, that I think about, but there's a few more as well. And when I'm, when I say that, whoops, um, this was when I first even came back to the marketplace. So even before I um, was thinking about steal our winners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what I was thinking about was that this, right? No entrepreneurs have first party data. And to me, this is really huge. And it's huge because, um, you know, so I first sold half of strategic profits to Agora back in like 2017. But then from 2017 to 19, I didn't even like deal with strategic profits. I was working on different artificial intelligence projects. And I, that gave me access to see um, enterprise level software th that leverages AI. Uh, that's insanely impressive that yeah. I would imagine will come into our market in a year or two years down the road. But AI runs on data and you either have data or you don't. And if you don't have data, then you don't have anything to power AI. And if you have nothing to power AI and your competitors do, then you're going to have a problem. And right now, every entrepreneur is generating first party data, but they're not capturing it. So even though like there's a tremendous amount of data maybe in their ad accounts. They're not sucking their ad accounts dry of that knowledge and storing it in their own business. Yes. And so they lose that if they ever lose their account or if they change how many years they go back, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at look at what Facebook and Apple both just changed. Yep. People lost access to data that they had. We can't rely on big tech. And I don't know if I can say that on our live stream. We can't rely on some companies to give us access to that data. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, talking about consequences, right? Like I just, uh, you know, there used to be hundreds of thousands of pages about me. When I type my name in, in quotes now in Google, there's 88 pages. But if I take my, if I take it off of quotes and just put like Sheffrin, there's like 34,000 of which they all say Rich Sheffrin. So it's a little strange, but maybe, uh, yeah, maybe they're not happy with me, but we need to have our own data. And yeah. uh, you have to recognize that, you know, I mean, one of the stats that really kind of got me into action back in 2019, as we started to explore, like steal our winners and stuff mm -hmm. and the council to save internet business was when Google went over the line of 51% of the searches on Google do not leave Google properties. You know, when yeah. like yeah. the original, understanding of a search engine was we will scrape your copyrighted content we will put it on our site and people will come to our site to search the internet but they will leave our site to then go right. to what they found not we will scrape your copyrighted content use that to attract visitors and then keep the visitors on our own sites because then well screw you you shouldn't have access to my free con my content then right and uh so yeah so first party data and you'll understand more about why that's so important as we kind of talk and about the infinity funnel because it's leveraging data yeah. right well, and real quick i want to throw one thing out there for anybody who's like i'm just not that big that i have that kind of traffic that kind of client basically like, you would be surprised how easy it is to actually collect data no matter what size audience you have and how to apply that and we'll talk about that a little bit but just know no matter what size your business is at and what you have access to you can leverage data because like Rich was saying a minute ago about him having access to all of the big gurus that he interviews and steal our winners. There are also ways that you can get somebody like Rich to give you access to his data and share it with you so that you can make better decisions based on data, even if you don't have it for yourself yet. So I just wanted to throw that in there for anybody who's, who's hearing the conversation and going, well, I don't know if this applies because it absolutely applies to all of us. We can't make great business decisions unless we have access to great data. Totally agree. And I think this next one is pretty self-evident, yeah. right? There's too many options out there. There's too many, it's, there's too many, like, I don't even know what to call them. Like I call them fake gurus, but I don't know if they're fake gurus or it's just very easy to create a facade, right? Yeah. Of like that you are somebody of much more import than you actually are right? So there's a ridiculous number of people, right? You can buy your way to a million followers on Instagram or, you know, 
whatever, or a ton of subscribers on YouTube or a ton of followers on Facebook and create this veneer or facade that like you are much more substantial than you really are. And now you start dispensing advice, but that advice is based on what? Generally, it, it lacks substance and it's kind of BS. And so between that and then all the legitimate options out there, between those two combined, it's quite overwhelming. Strategies and tactics don't work as well for as long. And, and there really hasn't been solutions out there um, that are in appreciation of all the things that we just talked about as far as vetted micro de courses designed around a specific action or outcome, right? So there have, let me leave it at that before I go any further because like, I don't want to kind of put anything in the cart in front of the horse. So <laughs> we don't want to go too not... far down that particular rabbit hole right yet. All right. So where do you want to go from here? Should we All check right. in with the group? Should we? Yes. I, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, how much of this have you been experiencing and seen uh, and what your take on it is? We're going to kind of transition here into showing you what we're talking about when we say infinity funnel. So for those of you who were asking, yes, we absolutely are going to get to that piece of thing. So let me, uh, if you want to watch chat comments for a second here, I will get these slides up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you might have to click, hopefully you have a button that says share at I the do. bottom. Okay. And while you're doing that, um, I think with information products, what are your okay, we've got that, uh, Dr. Vogelman, I freely give attention to Rich. Thank you. My courses are getting used less than my treadmill. LOL. Um, <laughs> audio is promising passive because it's passive consumption. I call my focus mental calories so you can burn so much in one day. Now I have SOW. I feel like I have no need to buy courses. I just find what I need, turn it on two times, take notes. Way better. This should have been the standard from the start. Well, thank you, Ryan. Great. Uh, thank you says al the sad part is everyone thinks it's okay we now live like china no respect for ip yep i hear you the green room is the best place to hang out yeah it's right over there it's green right there yeah. <laughs> rich made his own green room yeah i hang out in my kitchen <laughs> it's green um you ain't lion said some said same thing bravo uh when will you go over the infinity funnel process next right now. yes uh i just feel the concept of build it and they will come that was a no-no before is totally what you should strive for today with being authentic and transparent to a certain degree, but based on we'll principles that, that we know work, yeah. right? Great yeah. perspective, huge. Uh, I can put, I can't put you on two times speed when you're live, really? <laughs> I feel like I talk slow because I guess I listen to so many things fast. I was reading a statistic the other day that estimates AI will take around 60% of all the jobs over mm. the course of the next 10 years, yep. Yeah, I did a really like there's a presentation I did on AI that I've been told by many people was the best presentation I ever gave. Uh, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, Damn walled gardens. Yeah. And you better have your own garden that you're, you know, you're kind of planting right now. Rich data from rich. Cool. <laughs> more rabbit holes, more wonderland. It pains me not to be able to get data that I was responsible mm. for creating. Yeah, totally. Imposter syndrome and fake it till you make it. When are you going to start speaking twice as quickly? <laughs> I'm working on it. Do I have a button um, for that? Is there something I can click that speeds uh, Rich up here? Uh, <laughs> I, wish I, could, I, I wish I had that button for other people because I find a lot of people talk very slow. Uh, I want AI to teach math one-on-one. -on -one, uh, so if having a private teacher, got it. Cool. All right. So where are we going next? We are going to the slides and I think you've got to okay. click. Oh, do I have to click? Okay, I have. Yes. Oh, so I have the control. Uh -huh. You are in control, All sir. Right. All, right. All right. So we are going to dive in here to what the infinity funnel is and how it's different from everything else that's out there. So real quick, you know, with Steal Our Winners, one of the, uh, the promise, the main promise, right, is we're bringing you the latest, hottest, most effective things that are working right now. But what if we could bring you what's going to work tomorrow? What's going to work in the future instead? And one of the things that you all know if you follow Rich is that he is really good at being able to figure out what is the future and to see that before the rest of us do. So in a minute, I'm going to ask him how he does that. And he's going to tell us a little bit about that and how he came up with his affinity funnel concept. But if you've ever felt like 
you escaped the corporate hamster wheel or the just getting by hamster wheel with a job. And as you created a business for yourself, kind of feels like you just traded one hamster wheel in for another because you are the one putting all your energy and everything into trying to power it. What we're going to show you is a way to actually escape from the hamster wheel, whether it's corporate or your own and how that plays into, you know, why Rich decided to bring Steal Our Winners together. So he shared a little bit about his vision for it, but let's talk about that scene into the future piece. So Rich, share with us for a minute about that because you have a really unique way of looking at things that's very different from anybody else out there where you are really seeing things before it becomes a thing. And I know that's how you came up with the infinity funnel concept is looking at what's next and how to be ahead of it. Yeah. And so one of the things that I would say is, is that, um, when we launched steal our winners, it was, um, you know, it was really the minimum viable way that we could launch it, mm -hmm. that, um, it really did not fit with my vision. It didn't fit with where I wanted to take it. Um, but it was good enough to get started. And, you know, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time, right? Not trying to get it perfect, trying to get it out and then use feedback to make things perfect. So I would say right from the get go, right? That everyone's experience of steal our winners is not the, uh, original, uh, way I saw it when I first wanted it created and that's okay. Like that's the process of evolution. Right. And so, um, we're now moving more towards a phase where it's starting to move more in alignment with what it is that I originally saw. But like, you know, on a, most of you guys know that I do, I do all my reading and all my processing in Evernote that, you know, everything that I come across, I save to Evernote first, then I will process it in Evernote. If it's not worth reading, I delete it. If I start reading it and find it's worth reading, I will then begin bolding whatever I think is important. And then as I come across it again, because I do searches in Evernote all the time based on what I'm working on, if I come across it again, I will look at what was bolded and then I'll touch it and highlight what was bolded. And so every time I'm touching a note, I'm taking it further, but I'm not taking all my notes to a point because it's not a process that like that's the goal. The goal is for me, anytime I'm touching a note and working with it to take it and set it up so that it's a better note for my future self. And, you know, one of the things that I know I have spoken quite often about during these live streams is, you know, one of the tenets of the way I look at marketing, which is that which is most personal is most general. You know, for me, right, I, um, I have courses that I want to get to, right? And I don't have the time to do it. So my natural inclination is with anything that I'm struggling with is, you know, I wonder if other people are in the same boat as I am. And I would ask people, therefore, like, you know, my friends, my, you know, different people that I know and get back the same answer as a confirmation that, okay, this is not something that just I'm struggling with. This is something that the world is struggling with. Mm -hmm. And that the, so that's like part one, right? The next thing is, is to kind of listen and notice what people are struggling with and what different mediums are doing uh, to try and adapt to new preferences. Like, you know, for me, when I noticed that Netflix had included like the ability to, to watch in high speed, like that was a confirmation signal, yeah. right? That was a signal in the system to me that like time suck and people wanting to process stuff faster is becoming really mainstream, right? Because our world is not as mainstream as Netflix, right? And so <laughs> when you see Netflix doing that or medium like with the amount of minutes to watch, I mean, to read a article, um, these kinds of things, it's about noticing them and wondering like, is there a bigger pattern here? Yeah. And then, you know, so I'm doing those things and I think I've shared a lot of those kinds of ways of thinking over the last year during these live streams. But the other thing that I'm overlaying on top of that, you could say, are questions. And the questions are, how do, how do I help my clients kick ass in the future? 
Uh, who do I want them to be in the future? And recognizing that at the end of the day, I'm in the business of business success or entrepreneurial success. That's, that is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And so today it's information. In a hundred years from now, who knows? It could be a chip that you insert into your Neuralink. Um, but like, we're not, we're not tied <laughs> to any kind of delivery mode. We're not tied to any specific type of content. What we're tied to is getting our clients uh, more successful in a shorter amount of time in their yeah. online business. And, yeah. and, and, it, and that's really important because I think most people don't think about the bigger picture. They kind of think about themselves like in, you know, they, they make the same mistake, right? That the railroads made not thinking that they were in the people moving business or the buggy whip companies. Right. Um, so I try not to make that mistake by thinking about who do I want my customers to be and how can I help them kick ass in the future? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, a, it's, those questions are simple, but they're not what I find. They're not the questions that most people ask themselves because they ask themselves much more selfish questions. So like, you know, I know on a live stream like about a month ago or something, we were talking about virality and I was explaining, look, no one handed other people my report because they love me. They, <laughs> they were giving their friends the report because they loved their friends and they found yeah. value in the report and therefore they wanted to share that value. So, yeah. you know, the, 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 the kind of self-absorbed <laughs> marketer or entrepreneur is saying like, how do I get virality? And the person that gets it is saying like, how do I get people to love this so yeah. much that they would want to share it with the people that yeah. they care most about? And so, you know, it's a totally different question. It's going to get you a totally different answer and it's going to be more in alignment with what actually works. So when you ask yourself the question, like, who do I want my clients to be in the future and how can I help them kick ass in the future? Like, and you really think about it from their perspective, not your perspective. You're not trying to come up with your business at this point. You're trying to figure out what is it that they need to kind of solve these uh, forever type struggle problems, right? Because every industry has these forever challenges. And if you're going to be in business, right? You ideally want to circle that area, right? Like, so in the computer hardware business, Intel made a very strategically bright move by kind of branding the chip and therefore, they were able to command the lion's share of the profits in a, you know, in a tower or box or laptop. And what I'm saying to you is the equivalent in our world are the forever challenges, not the challenges that people solve once, right? Yeah. Like getting a divorce is not a forever challenge unless you consistently marry the wrong people, right? But generally, it's a one-time event. It's not something that you need to consistently get more information on right. and the and so whereas like leveraging the best and most effective marketing tactics is a forever problem because you don't ever solve it and be done with it just like your health is not is also a forever challenge mm -hmm. you don't get healthy and then that's it you can just sit on the couch eat cheetos and you know drink beer all day you have to keep working at it right so um so for those reasons, um, like that's how I spot opportunity. I spot opportunity because of the research I do, because of the listening I do, the processing, like the progressive summarization, which is very similar to like taking smart notes and having a Zettelkasten and, uh, and then focusing on those questions, right? And recognizing that like when I do these live streams, which I do, you know, twice a week, I'm paying attention to the questions that are being asked to me and um, paying attention to uh, where people drop off and what, you know, what things seem to get people more interested. And all of that mm -hmm. are feedback mechanisms. And I think that when you know what it is to be looking for, you can spot those opportunities or signals in the system much more frequently. But if you don't know what yeah. you're looking for, you're blind to it. So I'd say like that's kind of the idea.
Yeah. Uh, you know what I love about that is the way that you're flipping things for people, because it is very easy when we're in business to get caught up inside our own head and what we're thinking and how we're feeling about things, and what, you know, and not look at it from the customer or client perspective. And really, how do we create wins for them? How do we present things in a way that works for them? Like one of the comments earlier about if people aren't understanding it, well, it's still our fault. We need to explain it differently. Right. Right. Um, and so I want everybody watching to notice as we go through and show you what the infinity funnel is and how it works, you're going to see that consistent theme in this of this is from the customer journey perspective, from the customer experience perspective, from how people buy, right? So let's, uh, let's dive in here. And I am going to... And do you have a picture of like what the... Home screen has or no? I do. I do. do okay, we so want to show them that? Yeah, before, yeah. I think we're gonna have to because <laughs> like it's gonna make this more concrete. But before you show it, uh, before you show it though, let me explain something. So as I said a little earlier, and I think I've shared it on numerous live streams as well, that uh, yeah, that the way you guys have experienced steal our winners is not what like I had in mind when I thought of steal our winners. And I have been frustrated by that for some time. And um, one of the ways that I like to describe it uh, after I figured out the best way that I could describe it um, was uh, that was when I was talking to my team, I would explain to them, look, it feels like I'm traveling all around the world to find like the 300 best tasting dishes that have ever existed like throughout the world. And I bring them all back here and my goal is for you to lay them out in a buffet so that people can pick what is most inclined to their taste buds, what they like most. Um, instead, what you're doing is you're taking every dish, putting it on a separate plate and bringing all 300 plates to the, to the table. And then like, we're just more of the problem. We're not part of the solution. They're already overwhelmed. They're already overloaded. They already have too much to go through. And we're bringing it all to the table, like assuming that they, sh and they're assuming that they should consume all this because we're bringing it to the table. And so uh, that was where I was coming from, right? Like that was part of the problem, that, that the way that you've experienced DLR winners is very much in line with uh the rest of the market which i have a bunch of problems with of which i've just shared some so that's part of it and i'm gonna hide us for a second so because people want to like when we want to show a slide in detail sure. or anything we can just move ourselves out but i'd love it if you could show the platform so that we can kind of just uh have so that people can understand like point of entry and what that means and all that kind of stuff. All right. So let's see. I can do here. That. All right. I'm going to, so I'm going to remove this slide for a second or no. I, yeah. Cause I have to, if you go, to, okay. So we see it there. Um, all right. All right. And I will go into full screen mode here. Cooperate with me. And I think I, yeah. All right. How's that? There you go. And we're invisible right now. We're invisible. All right. So you guys are about to get a sneak peek behind the scenes of what we have been working on. And I will give you a, a heads up warning here. There are a few things we can't show you yet. We need you to sign an NDA before you can see a little bit more. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we're going to show you some of it here. So when you log into the vault you will see it is an entirely different experience than what you may have seen in steal our winners as it is now and other funnels that are out there because this is a funnel this is an infinity funnel and we're going to yeah. dive into what that means and how it works but we're going to show you a little bit of what does it look like you can see these are just some teaser screenshots <laughs> that give you an idea of what's coming we're actually going to tell you how you can get access to this before we roll it out to the public. A few of these. You can see it's a very different style of content delivery here that lines right up with what Rich has been sharing 
about how we actually want to consume content, how we want to go through things. And from a business perspective, we're going to show you how it lines up with getting monetization working, solving some of those funnel and upsell problems that we talked about earlier. Let's see. And Rich, I don't know if you want to, if you want to comment on any of these, you are welcome to jump in here. Yeah. So a couple things, right? Like, and I think like, I don't know how many more you have to show them, but I, a couple things I want to point out, like where you see uh, above John Benson's head, uh, it shows topics. And if you were to click on that button, mm -hmm. um, you would see that everything now is tagged and searchable based on what it is that uh, you, uh, you know, what it is you're looking for. And this platform will be rolled out to all of Steal Our Winners, ultimately. This will be the new platform. So if you're a lifetime member, this will ultimately be where you go to consume your information. And if you're a subscriber, this is where you'll go. This is not public yet, nor will it be public for a little while, but mm -hmm. um, as we work out all the kinks and figure out like all the different cool shit that we're gonna be doing. But, uh, but this is the new platform. And, you know, each, um, each segment will have the action items right on the side. Uh, there's so much to tell you about, but before we go into all those details, I think it's probably best for Michelle and I to just talk a little bit longer and kind of give you a little bit more of an understanding of what you just saw and what it's, what it's capable of. And if we were to show you more of it, um, you'd just be more that, that much more impressed. I promise you that. So I want you to think about like, you have some reference point with Steal Our Winners. Um, and I want you to think about now every single segment of Steal Our Winners being a separate front end product, that every Steal Our Winners uh, segment has its own thumbnail, has been edited, can be previewed. And when you go to the Steal Our Winners homepage, that's what you just saw. Like uh, Michelle had to log in because right now it's password protected, but. <laughs> When you go to Steal Our Winners, even if you're not a subscriber, you will see exactly what was just on the page and you will be able to preview any video, which means that every Steal Our Winners segment is now a customer acquisition front end, right? Yeah. That our affiliates can send someone to any single interview that, you know, any segment and we can price any segment based on however we deem to price it, right? We can, we can create stacks of them. We can sell individual ones, like, but we have this ability now to basically meet people wherever they are. And I want to talk about that, but I look like yeah. Michelle wanted to say something. So well, I was, I was just going to jump in for a second and um, I don't know if we can put maybe the slides just for this, this part back up uh, for sure. these five things, because when we talk about an infinity funnel, there are five areas that you want to have working for you in your business. And you're going to want to write these down as we go through them, because it doesn't matter whether you have zero content or a thousand pieces of, well, more than that, like Rich does or anywhere in the middle. These concepts you can apply to whatever you've got to really get things working better for you in your business. So the first one is infinite points of entry, right? I think we all know that the traditional funnel model does not really work the way the way that we've been told it does. And I know, Rich, you've, you've got some things to say about that. Um, yeah. But it's something that trying to get everybody to come in through one door and go down one pathway, like we talked about at the beginning, it's not working. And instead, why not give people infinite points of entry where they can come into your world from and go exactly what they're looking for? and buy and invest. Uh, and so that's the first piece of it is having those infinite points of entry inside your your world in an infinity funnel. Yes, and the, um, yeah, so let me show you, let me go back to mine for a second too, I can do that. Hold on, I'm always confused as to how I there. Let's see, yeah, that, yeah I've taken, in a bloody coup, I've taken control. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah. So every segment is a front end. Right. And that's important to recognize because that allows us to meet affiliates wherever they are and can sell any kind of program based on price point as well, um, because we can stack and create bigger stacks, smaller stacks, et cetera. Right. But well, I want you to really. 
go ahead. I was just going to throw in there. And I think one thing that sometimes we forget is what the concept you mentioned earlier of we don't have to gather all this data ourselves. We don't have to test everything ourselves because we can get the data from people who have, right? And right. Amazon, if any of you were thinking when you saw that earlier, hey, that looks a little familiar. Amazon and Netflix have already tested this model of infinite points of entry for us and they have proven it works, right? So they've spent billions of dollars testing and tweaking this stuff to see and the model already exists. So I just wanted to, to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, and what I would say is, is that it's not just about like the skin, it's also about how it, like what yes. is being delivered. So, you know, I would say, and I don't mean this in a bad way about two people who are friends of mine, um, but like with Russell Brunson, when he did Funnel Flex or when Tim Burr did uh, Ad Leaks Vault, the challenge that they, I think, overlooked is attention scarcity. And so what both of them have in their platform are courses. So, you know, what those Steal Our Winner uh, boxes are, are individual episodes. You can watch one of those in an hour, even at regular speed, much faster if you want to watch it in high speed. I want you to imagine for a second, though, that if every time you logged into Netflix, every movie was 10 or 12 hours long, like how many, how often would you binge? Or if you opened your Amazon Kindle or iBooks and every book was the length of War and Peace or Atlas Shrugged, right? You know, multiple thousand pages. And then like how often would you feel like going into those platforms, Netflix or, you know, whatever yeah. book platform you buy books on. And, and that, you know, optionality is only valuable if those options can be actually chosen within like the time frame that someone has. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. So, um, so part of it is like the platform and the way it looks, but you could do all that right and then serve the wrong stuff. And I think that's what's been done in our market. The next thing, though, is recognizing, and this is really critical. I, I don't know if people really fully appreciate how critical. Let me just see if I can make this bigger. There we go. But every interaction that we have on this platform, I want you to fully understand this because the next point is built off this. Every interaction is both an opportunity to leverage all the data that we currently have about the person who's taking the action, about all the people that have taken that action before, right? We can now leverage all that data to like in their next choice of what to present. We also though, in every interaction, have the opportunity to learn more, right? Because we're getting data. So we're validating, we're getting data and we're leveraging data in every interaction, which is all first party data, right? Mm -hmm. um, what that ultimately means, and I want you to really get this, is that funnels are built on the fly by, by the person, like by the time based on all their behaviors. Now that's not what is real today, right? Like I don't wanna pretend that like our whole AI system is fully functional and competes with Netflix currently, because it doesn't, um, but it will. In other words, like if you're, if you're interested in this topic and then you watch another one about that topic and our system knows that generally 90% of the people who've watched those two videos generally choose this third video, guess what it's going to show you next and offer you next. So this is really a funnel that you're building, not you as in the owner of the business, but you as in the prospect who is on your website, they're building it based on what it is they're doing. So it's dynamic, it's not static, right? And that is insanely powerful because the next point is once we know a visitor, we can easily make that experience of the platform, right? Be a lot more relevant and a lot more personalized. One of the things that we're talking about now, and these are the kinds of things that we want you to sign an NDA for is, you know, we can offer a free segment of steal our winners when someone gets to the page, right? Cause they're going to see everything. They're going to be able to pre preview everything. And we could offer a transaction where we give you a free interview, a free segment. And in exchange, like 
answer these few questions. And the yeah. questions are, where are you struggling right now in your online business? Who are your favorite gurus, et cetera, et cetera. And, and guess what? Rich, let me yeah. pull up the slide that goes with that real quick. Okay. If you want to flip back over to it, because that's, sure. that that's one of my favorite parts of this is what we've got built in is this opt-in here that it can be customized. So when somebody comes and says, I want my online money heist, right? Because it's a vault theme and that steal our winners vibe that like Rich said, we can run them through a little quiz that says, you know, what are your goals? What are you looking to do in your business? Who are you following? And customize the content that they see. And that gives us a way to really personalize, not just their first contact with us that makes it feel incredibly valuable, but also everything beyond that point. So if we know you're looking to learn about Facebook ads, we're going to put the videos about Facebook ads into your personal dashboard view where you're seeing those things. And of course the offers, and we'll get to that in a minute that are inside of it will be customized to line up with that as well so that it's all very customized. And the thing is you can incorporate this in your business, no matter what size you are and you don't need, I, I see the comments that are having a tech discussion in chat uh, because you guys have accounts, you're logged in. Yes, of course we're watching what you do in service of making sure you get exactly what you're looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so just see. to answer Brian's question here, right? Like, cause Brian's like, Oh wait, no, that wasn't Brian's question. Where's Brian's question? Um, yeah. Brian said, uh, how are you gathering the data if you don't have access from the iOS or OS cookies? Well, we don't need cookies if people are logged into the platform, right? Yes. That's the whole reason yeah. why, uh, Facebook, uh, has you log in. That's the whole reason why Google has Gmail and every, and Chrome and everything else. Like once they're able to associate an identity, then everything else is easier. So it does not matter. Like if you have to be logged in to access content, yeah. then, you know, anyone can access the previews and the, I have that, uh, I don't know where I cover it, but just in case, like, I might as well just like mention it here. Um, Let's say, right, that someone, we can personalize on, and this is not just us, this is anyone. Once you have this kind of data, you can personalize on many different levels, right? So you can personalize towards like the ad that someone came in on. And so if, even if you don't know who the person is, if most people who come in from that ad are, select certain things, then we could show them those things. If it's not the ad, it could be the platform and the channel. Um, so there are many ways to, uh, use data, even when you don't know who the person is to optimize the experience. But once we have that data, right, the platform becomes smarter and actually starts to serve them what would grow their business the most, what they're most interested in, and is also capturing all of what they do. So guess what? If everyone who like logs into a certain segment doesn't make it to the end and everyone bails 50% through, we're not having that contributor back. And we're <laughs> and that that episode is going to disappear. And let's say everyone who watches a specific episode um, like watches it to its entirety and everyone ranks it high. Um, that's totally different, right? Yeah. So. Um, well, so last thing here, just on the data side and a gazillion points of entry, um, <laughs> is that the data it provides us understand not only is it relevant, like on an individual level to make the experience better, mm -hmm. but we also will have insane levels of intelligence, right? Yes. We'll know that if you can, if you think of like the market as a big circle and the subscriber base of steal our winners is a smaller circle within that circle, Right then uh, just reflective, we'll know ahead of time the mm -hmm. topics that people are most interested in, the topics that are becoming less interesting to people because people are yeah. watching that less. Uh, the gurus that are most enjoyed, the gurus that are most followed, the gurus that are the least followed, right? The most yeah. popular topics, the thumbnail colors that get the most clicks for our market. <laughs> I mean, you name it, like we'll have tremendous amounts of data. And I wanna tell you, that um, while we're very proud of what this whole thing is, um, if you think that this is only happening in internet marketing, it's not. Um, like I shared with the team, uh, think of steal our winners, but for doctors. 
And instead of it, other gurus, it's all different surgeons sharing different mm -hmm. techniques based on like, so multi doctors, multi surgeons, all like for continuing education for doctors, right? So same exact model. And this yeah. model re is leveraging the fact that people are attention scarce and they want to pick their own, they want to pick um, their way to consume and they want specific recommendations for specific outcomes, right? Well, so those uh, are some of the points of entry, but there's <laughs> actually a lot more. There are, and I think one thing that's, that's just such a great example of why this works because we have all experienced it is Amazon. Uh, and and how they have built their platform that you don't end up on Amazon forced through a fundle where you got to buy the five dollar thing to get to the ten dollar thing to see the fifty dollar thing. You're not going through a process like that. You can come in anywhere. You can buy as many things as you want. You can subscribe to a channel. You can pay per per episode. You can rent something. You can buy something right there, giving us choices. And that goes back to what Rich said earlier. When we empower our customers and clients to make those choices. They will make more choices to invest with us in the things that they're interested in. And when we're able to get that data and figure out what are people interested in, we can create a better experience for them inside of whatever our platforms, our systems are. And this is about, and I, I want to make sure because I see the comments in chat. And yes, this is about the platform for Stiller Winners, but this is also about something that's so much bigger than that. Because I can tell you for somebody like me and what I do in business coaching, when I have access to the data that Rich has access to, and I can see what people in the Steal Our Winners community are resonating with, paying attention to, watching, then I know what can I be paying attention to in my business? How can I be applying that data without having the same size audience as Rich and still get great results because I'm borrowing his data and we're going to share with you guys in a minute, I promise we'll get there, how you can get access to all of this data that Rich is gathering in the new platform and what's going on behind the scenes with us. I just wanted to throw this out there so you guys know right. this is about something so much bigger than just the new platform Great. for whoa, Steel whoa, whoa. Winners. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Are you the, can you hear me, Michelle? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear uh, me? We got a couple things here. We, we lost video signal, Facebook, me too. Yes, and audio. Time to get the internet. Oh, oh. oh, you need a satellite? Chuck Maybe it's just Facebook. I don't know. Um, I can hear you fine. Anyone experiencing difficulties uh -oh. on YouTube? Yeah, let us know, guys. Can you see us on YouTube okay? Uh, hmm. YouTube seems YouTube to be working fine. fine. So it's a Facebook thing, it sounds like. All right. Okay, so well. let's see here. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, yeah, Facebook is not going to be happy with me in a second. Oh, no. <laughs> it is I, what it is, right? Checking um, out, looping. LinkedIn is working fine. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, all right, the joys of technology. This is why you got to own your data, own, own yep. the platforms that you use. Uh, so if you want it cool. in... Uh, Let's see. hopefully, I don't know if this works, but it should. Ryan's we'll put a link in. Here, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So if you are having issues with the stream, yep. well, you probably can't hear me right now. Click the link to YouTube. <laughs> yep. And hold on a second. Um, this is the. YouTube's okay. All right. Thanks guys for letting us know. Are we back? Martin says we're well, back. That's where you can watch it on. Okay. Uh, that's where you can watch it on YouTube. All right. And, well, let's uh, let's let's share with you guys the four other uh, mm -hmm. infinite let's points in the infinity funnel because we've only gotten through one, and we promised we would yeah. share these with you. Again, these are things you can apply no matter what kind of business you're in, no matter what you're doing. If you just think about it a little bit differently, so that first one was infinite points of entry. The second one is infinite organic growth. And you can stop throwing insane amounts of money at ad campaigns that aren't working if you get this in place, and then your ad campaigns will work even better. Um, when we're looking at the concept of the Infinity Funnel, one of the core things that powers it is everybody who comes in immediately is given referral links and incentivized to share 
so that they are out there. And this only works if you do what Rich talked about that he did with the original Internet Business Manifesto. People weren't sharing it because they loved Rich. We love Rich, but we were sharing that because it was awesomely valuable, helpful information. If your platform, your, your products have that kind of information in them and you give people the opportunity to share and set it up so it's easy for them to share and reward them for sharing, you can create organic growth through that and you will see that inside of the new Steal Our Winners platform. You guys will be incentivized to share and to spread Steal Our Winners and that's something you can apply multiple points in your own business so that you have an engine powering that and helping you reach a bigger audience as well. So that's the second thing is infinite organic growth. And that's built into whatever platform you put together when you're building an infinity funnel. Um, and you guys, you've seen that again, Amazon has the model for this. They have proven it works. There are share buttons everywhere. Um, I've, I've lost count of how many ways I have shared things from Amazon and had people share them with me uh, as well. So that's number two. Number three, and this is something that, you know, Rich really dove into the concept of what are the paths through this system, through this process, and how do we create infinite monetization loops? How do we build a platform and build a funnel in a way that there are endless opportunities to monetize that platform and not just push sales messaging at people, but make it feel so natural based on where people are at and what they want next that, you know, it's almost like, and I'm sure I am not the only person who this happens to. You're thinking about something and then the ad pops up and you're like, oh, yeah, that's exactly the boots I wanted. Tell me I'm not alone. Please let me know in the comments if anybody else has that happen on Facebook and elsewhere online. It's happened to I, me. It happens to me all the time. And it's to the point where when I go on Amazon now, it will show me things that I didn't even know I wanted because I didn't know they existed. But they're exactly what I need. Like, I need them. And, and that's the effect you can create where people are so excited to see your upsells and offers that they're like, this is exactly what I wanted. Oh my God, Rich knew I needed this next, right? And that's, that's the effect you want to have in your funnels is people that they just want to throw their credit cards at you because you showed them the right offer at the right time for the right person. And that is different than 99.9% .9 of the funnels out there. They're forcing us through a process we only get to see one path. It doesn't matter who we are or what we want. This is your one path. Don't do that to your clients or customers. Give them opportunities to be in the right places for the right offers. Um, yeah, it happens to others too. Okay, I feel better now. Mm. <laughs> they know my subconscious better than I do. I know. It amazes me the things that come up, but that's the power of data. Because they know if I've looked at things X, Y, Z... I'm probably the ideal person to buy this other thing that I don't even know exists, but clearly I need it. And you can apply that in your business when you have access to that kind of data as well. So, all right. I get excited about that one. Sorry, Rich. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Right. Let's see here. And the fourth one. This one is, if you're writing this down, this is number four, infinite engagement. So at the beginning, we talked about people who were tire kickers, they're just coming in, consuming free content, free content, free content, never converting to a client or customer, or they come in and they buy and then they don't do anything with what they've bought. And then you end up frustrated, right? Because you're putting this stuff together because you want people to use it. You want them to get results. You need them to get results so that you can capture social proof and go get more people into your programs and your products and your services. And you can do that when you create infinite engagement inside of a platform. So let's talk about that one for a minute here, Rich, um, because this ties into the customer journey and some of the things you've been talking about with that. Yeah. And, you know, the first thing like to think about, like, what is one of the barriers of engagement is, you know, lengthy, long, big yeah. commitments, right? So uh, something that should start becoming part of your overall like vocabulary is um, there are many different ways that it's sliced and diced. Uh, you can like look it up in Wikipedia, but uh, LPU, right? LPU, SPU or MPU, they all mean the same thing. Uh, LPU means least publishable unit, right? SPU means smallest publishable unit and MPU means minimum publishable unit. I think we'll use MPU, um, but like, 
th start beginning to think about content in bite-sized pieces, whatever bite size is for you, right? Um, and we'll have different levels. Like, you know, I've, I've, we've talked to the team and I've, I think I might've even mentioned at some point soon, I want to do minute manifestos, which are just short brief bursts, but the small publishing units. And, you know, Michelle's going to show some gamification in a second and like some of the elements of it. But um, one of the things that we're doing on the engagement level is, you know, how do we engineer a client success in 14 days? Like, what do we need to do to get someone like so that the system knows what that person would most benefit from, get it in their hands and help them in whatever way, get that outcome so that we can generate as many success stories within the first 14 days as possible. In addition to that, like asking or kind of forcing a ranking on every video so that like we can then gamify our contributors, right? And reward the contributor that gives the best contribution this month might get act like might get banners on our home page the following month. Uh, we've also talked about putting a bounty on every single segment. So the first person that creates a case study, getting the same outcome, getting a positive outcome like our expert did, you will get a bounty. So there's a reward offered for every single one. And, um, and what another thing is, is that then releases become more of an event. Um, and we have some really cool things planned for that, but I didn't want to go on too long. So Michelle, why don't you show some of the things that you were thinking about? <laughs> Let me give, give me just a second here. I'm uh, pulling up the gamification so that I can but I can, can share a sneak peek because again, that was that part's kind of NDA, but I will find that for us. Uh, and let you guys let you guys see that. So just give me give me one minute here, Rich. While I pull that All up, right. if you I'm going go. to put it just on us for a second. Yeah. There you go. And um, I will. So yeah. So in a work, the system right like will work from the standpoint just to kind of circle back for a second on monetization loops the same way, right? As like Amazon prime, like there yep. is no credit card that once someone has bought from us once, right. They are now able to buy things to watch in real time without leaving the site, going somewhere else, being offered other things like, and this like non seamless way um, right. of operating. Right. So it allows for us to kind of, take advantage of like the impulse or the desire to proceed without um, without the need, right? Like to bring someone off and ruin the experience. So, okay, so put it back to the screen, Michelle. Yeah, or no, oh, no, there's a video, so hold on. I didn't see anything and now I can't hear you. I don't know if that's me or you, I think it's you. Can you hear me? Yep, now I can hear you. Okay, all right. All right. Am I supposed to put it back you on that can, screen? You can put it back on the screen. Here. All right. And I will, let's see here. I will show you guys some sneak peeks of this inside the system. So we've designed gamification a little bit differently than you've probably seen it done before. Can you guys see my screen? There we go. Uh, and I'll walk you through some of this. So there's three core actions that we want our community to be taking aside of steal our winners. There's learning, there's doing, and there's earning. And uh, we do not want, uh, we, we don't want to just track, you know, you get points if you do X, Y, Z. We really want to incentivize people to actually jump in, complete things and share their results. So they're actually generating results. So we've got the learning section here that tracks, not just are you completing things, but how many things are you completing in different topics? Where are you focused at? How much time are you spending on it? And logging all of that. We also have doing. So actually uh, moving into this one here, same thing. What are you taking action on and doing? And because we have those checklists, let me go back to that and show you this real quick, uh, that Rich mentioned. We've got in every episode, the checklist here, the system tracks as you complete your action steps. So it can actually see where you're making progress, what you're getting done inside of the system. And then we can give you rewards based on that. And one of the things that we've built into this is that when you complete something, 
it'll pop up and ask you to share, hey, tell us about what you just completed. Are you excited about it? What do you see happening now that you know how to do this? And we can be gathering social proof at all points during the process, completely on autopilot. And we're asking at the right point. Because if you ask somebody to give you a testimonial before they've even checked out your course, that's not really the right point, right? You got to wait and you got to know when are they implementing. And without data and without tracking, you don't know when somebody's taking action on it. So we're watching that. And then the earning part as well, as we go into, let me skip through. And I'm, I'm in this uh, video because this is top secret. Guys. I shouldn't mm. actually be showing you this without you all signing the NDA. This is something we are literally building out right now. And those who join us in what we're going to talk about in a minute are going to get to see this being built and help us test it and play with it. But we're also tracking actual earning. So we're allowing people to self-report based on what they learned and steal our winners. What are the results they're seeing? And when they check in and report that, like Rich said, there's going to be bounties that people can win. There's going to be gifts and swag and prizes in addition to points and badges and all of those things. We're also taking this to another level with the affiliates where we're going to gamify our entire affiliate program. And there will be leaderboards and incentives to get people promoting because a great affiliate program doesn't have to be launch based. You can do it in a way that's evergreen. So you guys are going to get the opportunity to see us implementing some of that. And I'm going to Hopefully I don't get in trouble. Oh, actually, speaking of NDA, in a minute, we're going to give you a link to this page right here. You could go sign the NDA and get some more details. That's not what I meant to click to, though. <laughs> so let me go back over here. Uh, let's see. So that was right up here. We were looking at that infinite engagement. And mm -hmm. engagement is one of those things. Uh, let's see. Gamify. Yes, we are gamifying testimonials. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, everything should be fun. Everything can be fun. And when you make it an experience for your community, they're not only going to be more likely to do it, but they're going to want to come back. They're going to want to refer other people to you. And that's really how you keep people engaged, right? Okay. So let's see. The last thing, if you are taking notes and you should be, number five is infinite paths to scale. You know, Rich, you mentioned earlier that that the biggest point of leverage we have is our business model. And mm -hmm. so many business models are not built to scale, right? And I think I'm, I'm going to raise both hands on this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Y'all can raise your hands with me if you've mm -hmm. experienced this, where you get something working great. You are making good money in your business, but you're working so many hours, you realize, oh, this is not built to scale. This is not something that I can sustain. And you need a funnel and a business model in place that is actually built to scale so that you are not the only one powering your business, that you're not trapped on that hamster wheel, even though now you're the one who owns the hamster wheel, it's still a hamster wheel. And so that's part of what the infinity funnel is designed to do is to give you those leverage points where you really can scale because you've got affiliates, you've got organic traffic happening. You've got easier ways to create your offers and have infinite points of entry with those. You have more monetization options and opportunities. And we didn't even get into all of the things you can do with testing out affiliate offers, knowing exactly what next offer you should create uh, that will sell. But all of that is what gives you the ability to really scale your business and to grow the type of business that gives you the freedom to get off that hamster wheel. So uh, those are the five points that really make an infinity funnel unique. And that's what we wanted to share with you. Um, so, Richard, are we good to kind of spill the spill the secret now? Yeah, um, I would just say really quickly on the scale side, right? Like, I'm just made a quick list, so I just run down them. New acquisitions and premium offers every month we're generating, right? Just based right. on the on the business model, right? An environment to test products like with real customers in real time. Uh, a system that becomes more valuable with every interaction mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, the opposite or non-scalable where you work more for like, as your business grows, this, as the business grows, the business becomes more intelligent and becomes yeah. more valuable and is able to sell better because of the intelligence ability to create products and programs on the fly by taking these minimum, you know, publishable units and bringing them together. Uh, Right offer, right time, right person, based on all the tech that we just talked about.
free pages and tools to make the site more sticky in and of itself, right? The site is customized to the user, like I said earlier. And if we don't have information on the user, then it's customized by other data about that visitor. Um, and we're alerted to winning topics, winning gurus, winning content, way in advance, and therefore know ahead of time before the market knows. Yeah. Kind of like when I had my retail store, we're always yeah. looking for the, the items that are going to make the season. And so this has been, um, this is something before Michelle even goes over the details, I just wanted to give you a frame. Um, yeah. So my bit, you know, strategic profits was the first online business that I know of that where we had dripped content in an e-learning platform. Like when I sold the coaching program, like there was no e-learning platforms that did that. So we actually, when business growth system was, you know, I was doing one group live, the other group was, we did in a forum. And so mm -hmm. the, vid, the, the audio and the, the PowerPoints and everything would be downloaded like in, and we'd unlock a thread in the forum each month. So we created the first like drip learning that we just created for ourselves where we housed all of our programs. And, you know, you guys know my history as far as, uh, you know, the automated webinars, popularizing the VSL, popularizing the freemium. And I can tell you that of all the things that I've ever done, I am more confident about this than any of the previous ones. And I'm going all in on this. And we're not at a place where like the model is completely built out and everything is like, we're ready to flip the switch and take over the world. Um, we're in a place right now where, where it's functional, where we see it, where we're built, where we now have the ability to invite some select group in to learn with us. So this is a great opportunity for each and every one of you. If you want to learn by our side, like I'm plowing in tons of money to learn this, right? And this is your opportunity for maybe one one thousandth or one ten thousandth of what I'll ultimately spend to get all this information. You can sit by my side and just learn this information. We're not telling you that you should create a clone of our site. That's not the intention here. We're not. This isn't a business in a box. This is for people who get how valuable it is to know like what like to be on the alert on to be on the alert for, what to notice for, what is actually happening and how does this all kind of get packaged together to turn into a high functioning business? Okay. You know, it's kind of like similar to, for many of you who know my story, like I paid the guy, the only guy that had a hypnosis center, I paid him to go work for him. So that like when I came back to Manhattan, I had the experience of knowing what he knew and not having to take 10 years to kind of like get up to speed. What I'm offering each and every one of you is an opportunity to do the same with my with myself and Michelle and my team, where as we learn all that we need to learn, as we put things in place, as we evaluate whether this works or doesn't work, you get the benefit of learning all of those things as well. So with that said, then now like Michelle can explain the program more in its entirety, but I wanted to kind of preface it by letting you know what the opportunity is. It's like one of your best friends is about to learn a ridiculous amount about <laughs> like new models and what works in a space that you operate in. And you can either join them or not. And Michelle is going to tell you the cost of the invitation or the investment <laughs> in the invitation. Well, I'd rather tell them why it's absolutely priceless. Uh, but no, so there's really a couple of parts to this invitation that I want to make sure that we really communicate to you all. Because, yeah, it's not about cloning this. It's about this model. You can take these concepts and apply all five of those things. So infinite points of entry, infinite organic growth, infinite monetization, loops, infinite engagement and infinite scalability to your business and in Finitize, I think that's a word, your business with what we're going to show you as part of this program. So you're going to be getting not just training that helps you apply these concepts to your business, but like Rich said, the behind the scenes of exactly what we're doing. And I'm going to go to the, the offer here, Rich, if you want to share a link with them so they can go and check it out. You are going to first be confronted with this page. All right. You've got to agree to this page before you actually see the offer because of what we're going to be sharing with you. Uh, first off, it's incredibly powerful. And this is stuff that, you know, again, Amazon has already tested and proven it works. 
but we've taken it to another level inside our own industry and our space to figure out how it works for us, how it works for coaches, consultants, internet marketers. And this stuff applies to anything that you're selling, right? So we need you to agree to the NDA real quick and uh, let us know that you promise not to share this beyond the group because this is limited and actually we should check because the program is filling up really quickly. We sent out one, one sneak peek email last night and woke up to uh, the program quickly filling. Um, only lifetime members got that early bird email. So you may have seen that. I saw a couple of you comment on it in chat. Sign the NDA on this page that Rich just gave you a link to and you will be able to see the offer itself. Because again, part of this offer is you will get alpha access to the platform itself. So before we release this to steal our winners members or anyone else, you will get to go in and help us test this and play with it and see how we're gathering the data, how we're setting up the content, how all of it works. Um, and you will get access to that info that you can bring back and use in your own business as well. So here's what's included. And again, go sign the NDA, you will see the full page uh, and spaces are limited for this because we are putting people in the site as alpha testers. We literally can only have so many people in this particular program. So the Infinity Funnel formula, the first thing is you get six modules that we'll be delivering live, revealing the keys to infinitizing your business. So this will be both Rich, myself, uh, Matt Risby, Michelle Matson, the whole team will be involved in showing you how to apply these concepts in your business so you can take it and apply it to what you are doing. And if you are on this page, you can scroll down and see what these six modules are uh, right here in this section. So infinite possibilities, that mindset of how do you apply infinity to your business and then infinite points of entry, organic growth, monetization. If you are looking to figure out how do you put affiliate offers, your own offers, more upsells into what you're doing, we're going to show you exactly what works, infinite engagement and how you scale that. Right. So uh, you can see that on the page of the first piece of the program, the second piece is that early alpha access. So you will literally be the first people inside of this platform as part of the Infinity Funnel formula. Uh, we have not let anybody but team see this yet. It is why that NDA is required as you are seeing it as we develop it, which means uh, you are going to be seen as we build out the gamification and these different pieces that we're showing you, uh, you get to see that. Let's see. So. Moving forward here, what you get, exclusive access to the Facebook group. So that is part of the program. We have a Facebook group just for people who are in this where we will be going live and showing you sneak peeks behind the scenes, uh, doing Q&A with the group. You have access to myself, Rich, and the team to ask us, how do you apply this in your business? What do you do uh, to apply these different concepts? Plus, we'll just call it some secret bonuses from Rich and the team, right? So... That is what is included in this. Like I said, this is strictly limited. Like literally the developers have told us we cannot let more than a certain number of people into this program uh, because the platform is in alpha testing. So if you want access to this, if you want to get not just these modules where we're teaching you how to apply it, but all of the data Rich was talking about that he is invested. I can tell you from seeing behind the scenes, hundreds of thousands of dollars in making this reality this is how you get access to that. We had 50 spots available in this. And uh, Rich, we should probably check and see what we had left because this is not, you know, we could put a countdown timer on the page, but we don't need one because this will sell out in terms of how many spaces we have available before a timer uh, <laughs> would run out. So yes, uh, that is where we're at. It is almost full. Actually, I'm going to go check that and see. Um, yeah. And, we are excited you know, to get you guys in there. Yeah. And what I would say is, is that like those, those key points, right? The infinite points of entry, the infinite organic growth, the infinite monetization loops, the infinite engagement, the infinite paths to scale. All of those elements are elements that we are planning on going deep with you, teaching you everything that we've learned and everything that we're planning on testing and therefore what other things that you could possibly do, whether or not you ever create anything like Steal Our Winners, um, what you want to do is you want to leverage these different elements of growth, right? So what we've tried to do is create the ideal in Steal Our Winners, and you're going to see us 
do all those things, right? From gamification for engagement purposes to, you know, infinite points of entry as far as a ridiculous number of acquisition tools, et cetera, right? And whether you choose this strategy or that strategy, um, the idea is, is that we're going to be on a very steep learning curve and we're giving you the opportunity to ride that steep learning curve with us at a cost that is insanely cheap when you compare the cost that I'm spending to test all these things. And not right? just that, and, Rich, but this is yeah. an opportunity because, and I know I'm going to be honest with you guys, I might get in trouble for saying this, but the team and I have been after Rich to actually be available for coaching and and for that type of program, because he hasn't been right. You guys have not been able to get access to him. And this is your opportunity to actually get access to Rich. You, 49 other people, that's it. A small program. And if you guys have any idea what Rich's time is worth an hour for consulting and the value of just one or two questions you could get answered by uh, by him, it is worth you know a thousand times the investment in this. So this is your chance to actually get in and get access to Rich as well as the team for that. Um, you know, you get to work directly with the one and only Rich Shefferin if you jump in and join us for this. So I just I had to throw that in that, Rich. And it is actually almost full. So for anybody who's thinking about it, I suggest you uh, grab it now before we send this replay out uh, because it's uh, it's clearly going to sell out quickly here. <laughs> um, Paul, uh, Davey Paul wants to know when it starts. When is this? Well, as soon as you sign up, you will immediately be taken to a confirmation page that gives you a link to join our Facebook group, which we are opening today. And you will begin to see some sneak peeks and things happening in there. The first module itself, I believe we've got it set to release in about a week. Uh, because as Rich said, we are creating this live. Like none of this is pre-recorded, recycled content. This is all literally us right now creating this for you guys and showing you how to build this for your own business. So the program begins as soon as you make the decision to join us. We will get you in the Facebook group and you will start getting access to behind the scenes sneak peeks and all of the different pieces of the program. The program itself will last about six weeks or six modules. But one thing I actually forgot to mention that uh, Matt, you guys can thank Matt Risby for this. He talked uh, Rich into is not just six weeks, but at three months down the road, six months down the road, we're going to be checking back in with you guys and sharing with you, hey, here's what happened when we implemented that thing we told you about. Here's what worked. Here's what we're going to figure out how to make work better and kind of bring you along with us on that journey even beyond the six weeks of the program. So you will be getting continuing access to those behind the scenes updates, which I, I'm excited for that and to get access to that data because I think that's going to be really cool, Rich, and really valuable. Yeah, I'm, for well, you know, I have that double reason, right? Of The reason <laughs> to do that is, and we might as well just like Matt will hate me, but we'll say six months of ongoing, like letting people know about the data. <laughs> and the reason for that is, is that I want to not only uh, make sure that we do everything that we're supposed to to really make this as awesome as it can be. But you guys become external accountability for my team, which, you know, as you guys know, I try to outsource almost everything. Um, so now, like when my team shares with uh, you guys, like what the plan is for this month, but the next month they better have it done and they better have some information to report back to you. Um, and you guys will probably be harsher with them than I would be. So uh, <laughs> this is a cool way for us to kind of let you see and experience everything that like every hypothesis that we seek to validate or invalidate, you get the benefit of it's for the right people. This is an insanely amazing opportunity. Um, if you're just starting out, you have no money, and you're debating whether you're going to quit your job or not, then this is not for you. Um, what this is for is that if, you're, if you've done stuff online and you recognize how valuable it could be to be at the beginning of a trend as opposed to where you might normally be, which is regretting that you were not yeah. at the beginning of a trend, uh, this is your opportunity, right? I've called my old tech guy back from that i got into agora like i'm talking to him outside of agora as well like every resource that i have access to i'm pulling into this because i can see the the potential and if you see the potential then i think you're going to want to 
uh, ride our coattails on this. That's that's the thing is, you know, this this is the next we could throw in a million words here, right? The next click funnels automated webinar right. drip email sequence, but it really is the next big thing, and it's not just for internet marketers. Like I see the comment from Kathleen, this would work beautifully for your audience because this is something that when you're looking at things from that perspective of really, like Rich said, if you want to know what the next big thing is, what's coming in the future, look at what do your clients or customers need to create amazing results? And focusing from that perspective is exactly, uh, Kathleen, aligned with the audience that you work with. And I think the one thing that I would say, if you're trying to figure out, is this a good idea, bad idea, is trust your intuition on it. I know if I had trusted my intuition, let's say on Bitcoin uh, mm -hmm. or even Dogecoin more recently, um, you know, you can imagine where I would be today. It's it's easy to dismiss that and think, OK, I'll look at it later. But if your intuition is telling you, yeah, this is probably the next big thing. Don't miss it this time. Jump in it with us and get ahead of that curve, because, you know, anybody who's followed Rich for any amount of time. Imagine if you had been there the day he invented the automated webinar and had the opportunity to get in then and start. How many years ago was that, Rich? That was 2007, 2008. 2007, so. 2007 2000. Yeah. Imagine if you had an automated webinar back yeah. then. This is your opportunity to jump in with something just like that, brand new, the next thing that's going to be big. It's going to be huge in our space. And, you know, trust your intuition on it is what I would say. Um, and I, I think we probably want to address a couple of these questions that are, are coming yeah. up in chat here. Yeah, um, I see some that we definitely want. Um, yeah. We definitely want to address. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, so let's see. Uh, where do you want to start? Oh, let's start with Hugo's question here. This okay. is, is this an upgrade for Steel Our Winners? So this is separate from Steel Our Winners. If you're already a Steel Our Winners member or subscriber, when we roll this out to the public, and it's going to be more than, more than a few months here, but <laughs> down the road, I can't, I can't give you the date. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell, but when we do roll it out, you guys will get access to it then. Uh, but the only way to get early access to it, to get the data and to get the training on the Infinity Funnel is through this program. So this is separate from Steal Our Winners. Uh, is that yeah. the correct answer, Rich? Yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay. You like <laughs> as a Steal Our Winners subscriber or lifetime member or annual member, ultimately, you, this will be the platform that you get your material in. But if you want to know like why we did the things we did, everything that we tested and the results that we're getting from those tests, like how many people are completing this, how many people are buying after that, that's not going to be shared and steal our winners. That's only going to be shared in this program, right? So yeah, it's all in service of steal our winners, but right now it's private and not in steal our winners, if that makes sense. Uh, the next one is well, do buyers of Infinity Funnels automatically become this a question. for yes. Steal Our Winners? Okay, yes. Sorry, I get excited. Yes, which I am personally thrilled about because I would like to be an affiliate and your affiliate program is tough to get into, Rich. Um, when you sign up and join us in the Infinity Funnel formula, you will not just get to be an affiliate. You will also get the behind the scenes of how we're preparing to launch this with affiliates. So you will get to be part of that conversation and be one of the affiliates who gets to promote the actual launch of this platform, which is going to be huge. Um, I am super, super excited about that part of it. So you get to become an affiliate. You're also going to, that's part of what we'll be sharing behind the scenes are those types of things. And you guys will get to be in on that. Um, there's also, I hope it's okay if I tease this. There's, yeah, also, sure. there, there's also the opportunity to find out how at some point you might get featured inside of Steal Our Winners with maybe your own channel, your own courses. That's down the road. And I'm, again, probably going to get myself in trouble for sharing that with you all. But everybody in this program is first in line to find out what those things are that are coming because you guys are going to see us building them out and see how that's being put in place. So uh, lots of lots of uh, insider information <laughs> available inside the program for those who join us. Totally. And, I, you know, for those of you who have been clients of mine, you know that once someone is a client of mine, I do everything possible that I can do to make sure that it becomes the best investment of their life. So my desire and my track record both show that. 
And so you will become the first affiliates. You will get inside access to make sure that if you decide to be an affiliate actively, you will benefit greatly and probably pay for the program all just from the inside knowledge of how best to sell it. But, you know, we're going to try and make sure that every element of this program exceeds your expectations because that's what I try to do in everything that I do. And uh, this will be no different. So. Uh, let's see, uh, well, Rob, that, that brings up an interesting point. I think rich, and that's for some of what? you who are lifetime members, you saw the email go out last night. That was the, you know, Hey, rich did this weird thing once with the mystery box and mm -hmm. rich and I were having a conversation yesterday about how, you know, social proof is one of the most powerful things that you can have in your business. And the only thing that's more powerful is trust and social proof builds trust. Um, but that idea of, you know, do you trust us? And if you followed Rich, if you bought the mystery box, oh my gosh, you already know. If you're a Steeler Winner subscriber, you already know what Rich just said wasn't any kind of hype or sales tactic or anything other than that is genuinely his goal and how he shows up is to make sure that you guys get far more than what you pay for when you invest in a program with him. And, uh, and I know I would love to hear from you guys. If you got the mystery box, was that thing worth like a thousand times what you invested in it? I know I'm still going through some of the courses and things that were inside of that mystery box, Rich. It has been incredibly valuable. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, well, I set it up front, right? Like my goal is to reward yeah. those who trust me and to make those who didn't regret that decision and you know you should do business that way like every time i wrote a report to which was you know i was writing the free reports the marketing reports my goal with each of those reports was to sell the product that was going to roll out behind it but mm -hmm. my number one priority was for people to get value from that report because whether they bought that product or not if they didn't get value from the report, the likelihood of getting them to read another report, which would give me another opportunity to sell them, was not going to be there. So, you know, my thought has always been that you want your customers to be very thankful that they're your customers. And you try to set up win, win, wins, right? So when Michelle was talking about even infinite organic growth, what I'm thinking about is how do I make it so that everyone is rooting for my business to win, right? How do I make it so that the contributors want to see Steal Our Winners thrive? Because as Steal Our Winners grows, they're benefiting greatly by its growth. Like, how do we make it so that members want to see us grow? Because as we grow, we're able to do more for our members, you know, and, and how do we do that for our affiliates? And so that we build an ecosystem where, you know, more and more we're, we're benefiting from these multiple points, all growing the business. And that is the type of stuff I want to share with you and teach you how to do in your business. Um, yeah, I'm itching to actually do some coaching. And, awesome. um, and so this is something that obviously I'm extremely passionate about. Um, and I, I know with every fiber of my being, this is the future. And I want to invite each and every one of you to join me with it so that you can benefit from everything that we learned. We've learned a lot already that we'll be sharing with you, but there is so much more that as we start to interact with this system, uh, we'll be learning more and more. And, you know, it's like you're getting a taste of AI when you play with conversion AI and Jarvis, right? Uh, that's just the beginning of what the next couple of years are going to be like. And we want to be able to exploit that and also build a marketing platform that allows us to take advantage of every type of uh, trend, every type of person that interacts with the system and every type of content. And I believe that we have figured that out. Yeah. Well, this is your, uh, your opportunity guys. We're, we're almost at the top of the hour. And actually I just checked the stats and we are almost, we're this close to, to the 50 spots being filled. And if you want in, now's the time to jump in and join us. I see some of the comments in the chat. If you sign the NDA, you will see all the details about the program, the modules, exactly what's included on that page. Uh, so go check it out. 
Uh, this is, again, including alpha test access to the new site. So the spaces are limited because of that. It'll be you, 49 other people, Rich, me, Matt, the whole team in there. You will get access to see the behind the scenes, to the data that we are collecting, to the platform itself, plus the training on how to apply this to your own business. And really, this is the future. This is what's next. And if you miss the automated webinar, if you miss these other things that have come and gone in our spaces, this is your chance to be ahead of the curve this time and to let Rich show you how to take this concept and apply it to your business. Um, I think that's that's it for me. Seats are going really fast again. So we've got a couple left, but grab yours now if you want in and we will uh, be welcoming everybody into the new program. Rich, any hey. final thoughts? There is one. It's very selfish of me, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to do it anyway. So, you know, I have um, I have my youngest daughter who is graduating and going to college this next year. Right. Um, which then, you know, empty nest and um, and my girlfriend, Kim, is always traveling, too. So like right now I'm in my house completely alone. And so <laughs> Rob Wallace had a question. Right. Like he had a question like. I wanted to do the meeting, but I'm in Australia and can't travel. Will you do the meeting virtually as well? I'll make you a deal, Rob. Um, will with if you decide you want to do it, we will buy one of those robots with an iPad that then becomes like where someone can take and use it. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about, Michelle? <laughs> like it's a robot that you can control like from a desktop. Um, so and hang on, to clarify real quick, quick, Rich, are you talking about the hidden offer? I'm talking about the offer behind the weekend, the, the weekend. Okay. Yeah, so weekend. for those of you who are watching this live stream and have no idea what we're talking about, there is a hidden offer behind the main offer that is to spend a weekend at Rich's place mapping out while well, we map out the launch strategy for the big campaign. So you might not have seen it. That's what Rich is talking about right now. I just wanted to clarify that, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not to confuse anyone, but I so want one of those robots. Um, and uh, if we, if Rob, you decide to do it, we'll use your money to buy one of those robots so that you can control it and uh, be here, kind of talk to different people. Your face will be on the screen and it will move around. You know what I'm talking about, right, Michelle? Yes, I have seen those. That, yeah. that would certainly be an interesting guest. Because I want one so that my kids can use it so I can like have my daughter like pop into my office every once in a while. And so I will use it for that once after this. So that's how we'll do that. But um, this is a great opportunity to really be on the ground floor of what I believe will be um, a dramatic growth curve that you get the opportunity to really kind of get the education you need to capitalize on it every which way. Um, you know, I've done like a couple of groups where the I've done a lot of groups. But what I can tell you is, is that every time that I've taken a new group down a new path, whether it was, you know, Mike Filsane and Dice and Brunson and all those people in my very first coaching program, or whether it was the theory of constraints program that generated another group of superstars, um, every time that I've stopped what I was doing and created something new, that initial group has broken records, has become well-known, et cetera. And what I'm telling you right here and right now is that I've never been more certain of what I'm talking about is right uh, than I am right now. So this is not, I am more certain than I was when I wrote the Internet Business Manifesto. I'm more certain than when I wrote the Attention Age Doctrine or the Entrepreneurial Emergency and if I was still in my report writing days, I would be writing a report very much about all these things. But instead of writing a report and talking about what's coming, I'd rather invite a few of you into a small group with me where you get the opportunity not to have me translate stuff and share it with a ridiculous number of people, but to share it with a very small group of people who will all benefit greatly with that information. That's what I am signing up for, right? I'm signing up for making sure that you learn new distinctions in this program, which the program is everything that we just explained, that you leave with distinctions that help you make a lot more money in your business 
right now and into the future. So get that and understand the opportunity that's in front of you. And if you do, then I'm super excited to be working with you. Yep. Love it. This, this is that opportunity. That is, that's awesome. You, you've got some great comments coming in the chat. Welcome to everybody who has already uh, dove in. I see, I see the I'm ins in here. I am excited to uh, get in the Facebook group with all of you. Awesome. How would you answer this? Is it a working model or is it still beta? Well, since we let you know that this is people uh, who join this program are going to be alpha testing, it's both would be the answer. It yeah. is working. Works, the site but... is up, but it is very much in alpha testing right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anything that's... else, Michelle? Um... I think so I like I like Brian's comment. He wants to make more money and get the condo on the beach. This is how you do that. Apply this yeah. in your business. Absolutely. Let's see. Oh, well, this has been great. Awesome. And I appreciate you, Michelle. And I oh, appreciate thanks. everything that you've done for this project. Oh. Um, they've re you and Mars have really made it happen. Uh, and so I'm very appreciative of that. And um, I'm also really appreciative of everyone who showed up tonight just to learn more about this. And, under and, and whether or not we ever work together, like understand the bigger idea here is that if you recognize that you're going to need to break down whatever it is you're doing into more micro conversions, uh, more think of minimum publishable unit and having more conversions, which therefore give you more data, give you more information about what is next. Right. And, you know, we're, we're going to try and take it to the nth degree but you'll be more profitable doing one more thing yeah. than than even what you're probably doing right now. And so that is kind of where you can already see all the signals that are pointing to that. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to share and take a bunch of you down this path so that you guys can benefit as greatly. So that's that's it. I got Absolutely. nothing else to say, Michelle. All right. Well, I'll just throw one more thing out there because I see Lorna's question. Uh, Lorna, you ask, this is a good opportunity for someone who has experience online, but not making a lot of money yet. Uh, I'll be honest. This is what I wish I had known. I wish this had existed when I was getting started. If I had understood how to apply this and how to build my business this way, it would have been so much easier to get to where I'm at. And going back and applying it, like Rich said, these concepts, just the smallest tweak in your business from each of them can have the biggest difference in not just where you end up, but in how much effort and energy it takes for you to end up there. Um, that's it. I, I will I will end on that. Um, I see the comments in, in chat. We will make sure we send out an email that's got the link uh, to the page. And if you're looking for that upsell, yes, we will make sure we get that for you. Uh, and I think that is that is it. Are Very cool. Coming to say hi. Or is Mars showing his face? Apparently, he's crashing the live stream. Um, hey, there he is. Mars says there hi. Mr. Mars. <laughs> Who can we oh, email wait. or chat with if we have questions? Uh, well, feel free to post them in the comments below the video if they're that kind of question. I'll jump in, team will jump in and answer, or you can reach out to mail at strategicprofits.com to get customer support. Um, does that sound right, Rich? That does. Okay. <laughs> I was looking for that cool promo video, but oh well, can't find it right now. Bummer. Uh, um, Let's see. Uh, we could end with that if I could find it. I can find it if you give me a second. Let's see. All right. If you have a newer version, questions. actually, and I'll take a look at questions while you do that. Then go for it. That? I will grab you the video. Right. Well, we're gonna play the vault video. Oh, I'm finding the vault video. <laughs> yes rob we'll send you a link uh you're very welcome lorna for michelle i wrote you hope to hear from you okay i hope to read it uh who can we email or chat with if we have questions that's a good so customer support is the one that would make the most sense there uh thank you richard and uh, i'm member number five in facebook group cool yeah not everyone who has Signed up as a member of the Facebook group yet. In fact, I just joined about an hour ago. I haven't let uh, anybody in yet. Yep. <laughs> it's secret. Uh, we'll be sharing information <laughs> about how to build a similar one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be sharing a lot of information about the yeah. platform, right? Yeah. Uh, everything that we learn about the platform, we'll be sharing and we'll be, 
you know, sharing how much we spent, what we're like, you know, we're not going to hold anything back. That's the whole purpose. We're going to hold everything back from the rest of the world, but we're not going to be holding anything back with you guys. Um, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, I love a mapping day with Rich, how to outsource tech partners. I'd love to work with you. All right. Well, cool. Uh, wait, LL, Rich, is this good for e-commerce or oh, only for info? Um, you know, it's good for both. Um, this model came, came from, a lot of the elements came from the e-commerce world. They've tested it with like billions of dollars thrown at it. So yeah, yeah. sorry, had to jump in. Yep. Um, you know, it will have to be modified slightly, but yeah, you're going to want smaller like, impulse type items. You're going to want to have data that know what sells well. Uh, yeah, I promise you, Hugo, you will not regret the decision. You'll learn a lot. Um, all so right. I shot you that link, Rich. Oh, did you find the video? I did. I sent it in the StreamYard chat. Can it come up? Okay. Uh, okay, so you sent it in the StreamYard chat. Cool. So let me, all right. So how do I do this here? I guess I pull it up. And then I share that page up. Oh, so sorry, we can't find that page. Are you logged in? It's a secret video. Oh, I'm probably not. All right. So hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of secret in. things happening over here at Strategic yeah. Profits. If you guys have not picked up on that theme, lots of secret <laughs> stuff going on behind the scenes. Which is not easy <laughs> for me because like I do these live streams a lot and it's hard for me to have to get on these live streams and not say anything about so many things. Um, yeah, I don't even know like... I have my old assistant's uh, email address that is, uh, I wonder if my, would my Google account be the one that opens it? Uh, let's see. I don't actually have that answer. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what don't your video login that. is. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to have to log in. Okay, let me see if it'll let me all screen right, share and it. play that for you all. Let's yeah. See here. And let's see. Thanks, Hugo. I look forward to Working with you, Hugo, on this one. Uh, we're just going all techie with Michelle. Yeah, I am the least technical out there, uh, <laughs> which always boggles people's minds. But, you know, that's part of the reason of divide and conquer, right? Like, you don't need to know how to send an email if you have people on your team that do that for you. Absolutely. All right. Sure. I have an older version, mm -hmm. but I wanted to see I the newer this version. One, I oh. think... I think this is the new one. All right, I, th I think I got it to share. Let's see All what right. that does. There you go. That's it. All right, so should we play it? Yep, we'll play this and then we'll just say goodnight to everyone. How about that? All right. Does that work? Sounds good. There it is. Very cool. Um, so, oh, whoops. I have us both muted, I think. Oh, no, there it is. Now it's unmuted. All right. All right. Is it? Yeah. My aunt. Yeah, I think so. We're All good. Right. All right. Yeah. Thanks cool. for tuning right, in, guys. guys. So this was fun. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I look forward to working with those of you who are joining us on this journey. I can guarantee you that you won't regret it. You'll feel Absolutely. like this was one of the best investments you've ever made. That's what I will be working relentlessly towards. And you are going to see a complete game change of online marketing. And you'll have the stories to uh, tell others about that you were there at the ground floor, watching all this actually happening. And then you'll have a story about how you used it to amass your wealth. And that's what we're all 
be working very hard on. So uh, with that, Michelle, any last comments? If not, we'll just wave goodbye. No, you got any last comments over there? No? All right. <laughs> Thanks for All tuning in, right. Bye, guys. everyone. And uh, <laughs> see everyone on Tuesday back at the regular time for the live stream. And for those that are joining us on this endeavor, you'll be hearing more from us very shortly. I don't know, we know exactly what they have in the works for you, but I will be looking at it and making sure that it surpasses my expectations, which the work that Mars and Michelle do always does. And same with Matt. So the higher profits of beyond over and 